Welcome to, to the uh, Cryptozoology uh, Show. Uh, this is uh, part 11, uh, Northern Lake Monsters. <laughs> so uh, this time we're going to just cover some hodgepodge, uh, sort of, of uh, I cover a lot more of the lakes, sort of, of Alaska and different things and uh, sort of the book and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to cover uh, some uh, sea monster-like things, some strange lake monsters, uh, uh, you know, everything from uh, uh, weird sort of uh, other strange <laughs> ones from Killer Pike to uh, a bunch of different sort of stuff, monster trout and uh, all kinds of different ones uh, mixed in with it of uh, different sorts of uh, uh, things out there. Uh, even though I uh, put down here, I mentioned about uh, whales, we're not going to actually uh, cover it in uh, this sort of uh, episode. Um, I'll leave that for something else, a sea monster episode and uh, things like that. But uh, uh, it's a, a shame some of these uh, creatures that used to be seen, uh, you don't see uh, too many counts of anymore, like the great auk. But I'm still convinced that it's possible that somewhere off of the Aleutian sort of uh, uh, areas, there's been sightings. And the great auk was even uh, sighted in the Boston Harbor. Uh, back I think around the 50s so I, I mean this uh, creature uh, bird here might have had a, a much bigger range at one point it was described in other sorts of locations so it's feasible that a little group of them could be somewhere mixed in some island someplace out there somewhere right so I always give hope for, <laughs> for some reason something tells me that bird's still alive yeah you know and same with the dodo <laughs> And, and also uh, my uh, mini finned uh, sea monster here that uh, is not as common of uh, sightings as what they used to be, uh, but uh, there's uh, still some from uh, time to time. But uh, certainly uh, Alaskan uh, waters has some very peculiar sort of uh, sightings and the colder regions and whales and Antarctic and all these sorts of places and Nunavut and uh, sort of all, the, all these sorts of uh, Greenland and all kinds of things. So we're going to cover some even killer Greenland sort of uh, monster shark beast, <laughs> all kinds of uh, uh, different ones. Now the first cryptid gives me the living creeps here. This is an absolutely uh, sort of a, uh, <laughs> this one is one wild sort of a, a terrifying uh, one in uh, Greenland. Lake and river monsters said to be seen in several lakes and rivers of the region in Canada. Uh, but this horrific giant sea scorpion monster, the crayfish looking beast, is spotted in shallow bays from time to time. Uh, from early explorers to natives have account from time to time of seeing these beasts. It's called the Kajanok, along with a few other local names for the beast. Uh, the Kajanok is especially reported in Lake Natsilik and uh, Lake Umanak, uh, Romer Lake, uh, that, that lake, uh, some of these I don't know exactly how big that they are, but I know they're fairly decent size, uh, but uh, Romanak Lake is uh, 37 miles long, a uh, depth unknown, it feeds the Greenland Sea. Uh, Centrum Lake, about 11 miles long, that also has a river uh, that uh, pours into the sea. So, uh, and you'll notice this, like I said, in other sort of things that it seems that a lot of times these things have connections to the oceans and things like that. Uh, another one here, Seal Lake, has reports of uh, seals to this giant crab-like creature. Uh, this creature seems to be some kind of huge sea scorpion that walks on the bottom and sort of sits there and then he'll come scoot up and grab with his arms and big claws sort of stuff and attacks its seals. It's said to be the size of a typical rowboat. So that that's one scary beast there. <laughs> so so if you're uh, out around uh, Baffin Island and all these other sorts of places or, uh, the, you know, somewhere in Greenland and these different uh, sort of ones, uh, uh, that might uh, be uh, slightly uh, concerned. <laughs> so, so this poor uh, kayaker saw one around Baffin Island in the 1950s. A canoeist sees this huge crab-like uh, looking monster creature in Lake Umanak in shallow water near shore, bigger than his canoe. Similar like uh, creatures are reported in a few places in Canada of a giant sort of lobstery, crabby like sort of a creature living in a freshwater lake, right? So 
kind of similar there. So uh, if you're in one of these uh, lakes, even though they're pretty freezing uh, uh, up there, uh, some of them have warm springs or weird sort of stuff, I <laughs> heard. <laughs> so uh, you might not want to go for a dip because that probably would attract the uh, creature uh, uh, through there. So, uh, yeah. so could you imagine you'd be swimming along in this sort of thing the size of a boat so let's say i don't know it's like 14 feet long a typical boats and that sort of range 12 14 10 if they're really small uh uh, you know, 18, it would depend on the area, like the Great Lakes are typically a bit larger and stuff like that, <laughs> so, but, but I mean, so whatever that they'd have to handle in that sort of specific sort of area, right, like in uh, uh, Newfoundland, you got uh, all the dories and all these sort of other sort of, so boats are designed in the particular climates, right, and the different things like that, but, so whatever a typical size boat would be <laughs> sort of around there, right, that would sort of, uh, be fairly terrifying at least anyways bare minimum uh, like 10 feet long sort of thing right so that's pretty scary <laughs> i mean I, I i i saw one time a gigantic crayfish that was so titanic it was like twice the plus of out of the massive thousands that have collected sort of since as a little kid would collect them for bait for night for uh, fishing right and stuff like that and I mean, this thing dwarfed all of them by me. He looked like a, lo a freshwater lobster, right? Sort of thing. So it's a mystery to me. I don't know how this thing was that big or even what species it was because uh, he was sort of like reddish, almost like a lobster, right? But I even had a sighting of something like this. <laughs> and this thing was absolutely titanic size, like uh, roughly somewhere no less than like 10 11 inches long to possibly a little over 12 inches long because it came out of some big giant mason jar that somebody had thrown in the river and it was actually sitting inside this thing so my only one sighting of something really strange like that of that sort of thing but i mean <laughs> so so i i, I in my mind I, I could see it feasible that somehow these uh, any kind of rivers that go in these sort of lakes that are near the ocean they also usually get seal accounts quite a few of them and it would be feasible that some kind of large sort of a uh, uh, you know some kind of crab like creature or some kind of thing like that would then sort of meander into these things and it's tolerable to them over a while and they get used to it like even the volga river uh, there, uh, some uh, character introduced these giant Chinese sort of crabs, but uh, it ended up that they still being eaten by these huge uh, uh, Volga River sturgeon, right? <laughs> a, a giant belugas, right? So, like, I mean, the same thing is uh, that it, it would be feasible that, uh, and they have no problem surviving in pure fresh water way up the Volga and stuff like that. So, the same thing would be, apply and wouldn't, wouldn't matter even if it was brackish or pure salt, fresh water or whatever salinity, they probably could handle it. And it could be that there's food and there and stuff like that, easier place for them to hunt that they might have even possibly gotten trapped in there somehow, some of them. Uh, but whatever the case, I would think there's probably some validity to it. The problem is, though, is that some of the sightings are definitely seal-like or something similar to that so it's not only these things probably exist but also other things are mixed in with this monster that are other similar visitors of a seal to different sort of strange ones right like uh, even possibly an octopus and things like that the, the odd the other little things might be able to sort of uh, float in right but uh, next area here's an, uh, another uh, terrifying one the giant squids uh, have also been reported by different native groups from the uh, Enapiak uh, to the Nunavut. And although science claim only reaches uh, just over 40 feet, once five times the size have been reported for centuries. Uh, the only bizarre account, and this is the only one I've ever heard of in fresh water, a bizarre account of two natives fishing in the Kapurik River, heading to a place called uh, Gwitter Bay, were attacked by a giant squid-like creature. They were coming back from fishing and saw in the waters a giant shadow heading towards the boat with huge long arms. 
just as the creature went to reach its arms out, they bursted in uh, in uh, paddle speed and uh, parked on shore, terrified to go back out. And so they walked their sort of canoe down, I guess, the, the shore for some way and with some alternative route. <laughs> it's just the same thing, right? So, I mean, absolutely, could you imagine, man? So... Like wow, like if they, like either that or they possibly it would, might have been a giant freshwater sort of a, 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 a octopus that also got in. They, they might have a squid octopus. You know, it's feasible that it, it might have been an octopus. But whatever it was, it sounded like it was absolutely titanic. And they saw these giant arms coming out. <laughs> sort of thing, right? <laughs> so like I mean, <laughs> that's absolutely terrifying. Could you imagine in a freshwater sort of river and one of these giant squid dudes come up? So, I mean, that's one of the wildest accounts I've ever heard of, of sort of a giant squid-like beast. Like I mentioned in the previous show, uh, the mighty Tursus, they're uh, sort of this giant freshwater octopus monster that occasionally uh, land in some of the lakes. It's the same thing. This is what I suspect, that there's underground caverns and weird stuff that can connect into these lakes. But probably the salinity doesn't sort of like affect it that massively much, maybe in bottom layers, it's more saline in these sort of areas. And these things come up in and out anything. It could be a sea monster to a squid, to an octopus, to an oarfish. Like, so it's probably, like I said, a lot of these accounts, some of them are strange where you get multi-species in the same sort of lake where some of them are definitely eel-like Others are sort of weird, right? Like sort of, it could be anything from octopusy to a, a shark sort of stuff, right? But uh, anyways, uh, I, I, I would 100% guarantee you that I would have done the same as them. Uh, there's no uh, shark or nothing on this planet that would have been able to catch the speed that I would have been going <laughs> to do because that would be the most terrifying thing in the friggin' universe, man. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I, I, man, that would be beyond human comprehension, something like that, like in a freshwater sort of like you figure you're safe in a freshwater lake or river. <laughs> you're right, like with a, these poor natives in some of these sort of remote locations, right? These the, sort of these things are. Uh, floating around out there <laughs> so, but, anyway. but of course lots of bizarre uh, ocean accounts and stuff like that in the previous show I mentioned about this uh, US giant uh, navy uh, sort of ship being attacked by one that uh, had to be at least like 150 feet long sort of idea and stuff you can watch the uh, uh, one of the other shows that's on about that but I cover quite a few from the north here and stuff like that and different ones but absolutely terrifying so, and I mean, could you imagine? Because they got giant eyes, eh? They claim they got the biggest, but like I showed you, the Tukalotla beasts and uh, also the beasts from Newfoundland, both of them have larger eyes than what a giant squids are known, anyways, and sort of stuff like that. But like I said, these dudes can get probably 150, 200 feet long, sort of thing like that, because I prefer to believe these historians. And there's proof out there, like I said, a Navy vessel and different things where. These people, it's an official report, the, the scar marks, it's fairly sort of like more on the fence that it has to be reality than not. And, and since you get these tales for massive hundreds of years and early scientists describing them and saying they reached this length, why doubt them? It's just modern science is mad because they haven't seen one that big yet. But these things were probably more common in the earliest, earliest days. Uh, less sort of a uh, commercial fishing pollution and all these sorts of stuff right so what would he expect right so that sort of thing and if we continue to keep throwing bottled water and uh, uh, plastic plates and five million other pieces of garbage uh, from our billionaire buddies that we purchase from daily <laughs> right? these uh, poor giant squid that might not have suckers anymore they might have to start using uh, they'll mutate and start up to using uh, a plastic uh, dinner dishes and stuff <laughs> as uh, as their suckers and toilet uh, uh, people throwing out toilet plungers and stuff so so this is the thing is eh? so like i mean uh you know, these things may not be around much longer if it continues like that. But now, here's the next one. That this creepy, uh, bizarre cryptid is called the Azzywoogum. <laughs> 
Ozzy Woogum. I am Ozzy Woogum. <laughs> right, so he's the walrus dog. Greenland, Alaska, Northwest Territories, Nunavut sort of area. There's, it crosses over a little bit, these sorts of things. This bizarre uh, scaled uh, dragon like a uh, water and land cryptid is reported to be the size of a large walrus, long, thinner, with dragon like scales and a face like a dog. Uh, said to eat seals and fish and stalks areas where seal herds are. One account, a, a bunch of natives were killed by one around the Bering Strait. Uh, even a naturalist described the beast that in the turn of the 20th century said the date of spirited. Uh, some accounts it swats victims with tails and attacks an uh, odd boat or people. Another similar uh, beast is reported in Iceland. One account from Inuit hunters in 1960s mentioned seeing an Azzywoogum around a herd of walrus stalking them. They said it jumped on shore and grabbed one and dragged it back in the water. They said it was thinner with a fatter midsection and sca uh, scale shiny black near the Bering Strait. Uh, a sort of thing like that. Somehow they got, uh, but anyways, it had a long tail and got cut out somehow. <laughs> but uh, fascinating. So pre pretty freaky looking, uh, whatever it might have uh, uh, be, right? Like and stuff. I haven't seen any sort of like a new modern account in any sort of recent years or stuff. So I don't know if this creature is still being seen, but uh, uh, fascinating anyway. It's uh, certainly an interesting one there. It's sort of uh, freaky with the black scales and stuff like that. Oh, they, they, they had mentioned too, some of them, that apparently, like, uh, you could spear this thing. Like, it could finally get through its scales. So they weren't, like, rock-solid cement, uh, but sort of like they were tougher. But, uh, you, you know, you could actually spear one of these dudes. And they got, like, little pointy ears and stuff like that. And sort of, you know, alligator, crockety, sort of dog-looking sort of face, right? <laughs> Fascinating uh, creature, anyways, but uh, very interesting. <laughs> uh, here, here is a bizarre uh, the glacier carcass of monster in 1956. A bizarre hunter, uh, a bizarre hundred foot uh, long carcass landed on shores of Alaska that had crimson colored flesh and hair of red down its back, teeth six inches long and five inches wide, with a five feet head and large eyes. Uh, Later, uh, to pass the buck was blamed on a Bayard's beak whale, but I mean, this thing was like a hundred feet long, right? A Bayard's uh, a beak whale is only about one third that length. So, like, I mean, <laughs> just really, like, and that doesn't look like a Bayard's beak whale at all. Like, I mean, so uh, uh, what's interesting is, is uh, uh, it could be a couple of things here, either that the bottom creature's jaw got snapped off or that they have a jaw like that, which there has been other sea monsters reported where the top part is sort of like a big spear-like thing and the bottom is shorter, right? So it's hard to know in that sort of a thing, but uh, uh, absolutely uh, bizarre sort of a, a creature. Uh, it, it, it's like sort of a... If you're looking at it, like, I mean, it has sort of a really strange sort of a head, right? Sort of thing like that. But it actually looks like it may have possibly like pointed ears there. You can see some kind of pointy like sort of stuff. And I mean, a beard speak whale shouldn't have hair on it and things like that. So I, I kind of think this was one where they passed the buck sort of and they couldn't figure it out. So again, as usual, they just sort of give it because I mean if the length is accurate and it's very feasible like not all lake monsters and sea monsters are the same right like some are quite thin so even though this guy's head to me doesn't look titanic size right I mean the creature could have a long eelish like sort of body to it right sort of thing like that so it all depends eh, on, on how it was shaped and things like that but anyways that's what they claim that they sort of that this thing was that uh, long so whatever it was it was certainly uh, bizarre looking and uh, the ears sort of make it not look like a beard's big whale uh, the eye positions about in the general area where it would be uh, unlike the Tucolata beast, like I showed you, it's very different. But there's some weird things about this that, I mean, uh, in order for that creature's face to be snapped right off like that, that's pretty weird because that's super solid bone-like stuff there, right? So 
how did that deteriorate off and not the other softer flesh first? So I find that a bit weird. Like, there's just certain things about it that seems a bit uh, strange. Uh, the, um, this dry harbor beast, as usual, was blamed on a whale, uh, but it could not be explained. Another uh, bizarre uh, 42 foot carcass with fur and an elephant's head in 32 was found on a glacier island and studied by a supervisor of the forest area and had a 24 foot main body and a 16 foot uh, tail. So, uh, sounds uh, pretty strange. Uh, there was, they said that it was like quite fresh and sort of like that. Some claimed it had scales on it and weird things like that. So uh, uh, the descriptions vary from a few different sources, right? So it's hard to know exactly what it might have been. Uh, here, this is a, a fascinating one, this Alaskan sea monster. Here's a photograph of it. Uh, this giant sea serpent up to 200 feet long has been a witness on and off at least since the 60s around Kodiak Island. Uh, with even photos of the beast and sonar readings of a creature 200 feet long and 300 feet of water that had the shape of a dinosaur, long-necked uh, a creature with fins off the southern coast of the Kodiak. In 1968, uh, fishermen saw a huge creature rise near their nets uh, that was grayish eel-shaped with the head of a horse. Uh, sadly, accounts give no size. Uh, uh, another better sighting by fishermen around Kodiak Island near shore saw several times uh, over a few days was 30 feet long with a horse's head. One member took a picture on right. A crew member shot at it and then it dove and swam under the boat shocking all the members watching it and, and then it vanished back into the Uganok Bay. So the, there's a picture of it. It's sort of like you can see in the front there it looks like that's probably the front of its head. And it's sort of down angled like that, so I could see why they would say it would be horse shaped. And I mean, it looks huge if you were looking at the background there compared to the sort of that stuff there. It looks like it's covering a fairly sort of large area. And I mean, you'd have to remember too, they'd be on a big ship here. They're not on some kind of little sort of tiny boat at equal level with it. It would be way higher up, so that's why it even looks like you can see it's sort of like at an angle it's pointing down at it sort of right so absolutely uh, fascinating so uh, uh, certainly uh, an interesting sort of uh, a cryptid uh, I, I haven't seen any too that there was uh, a few sightings around the 2000 and some of around this region that could have been the same sort of thing but it's hard to know, but anyways, at least there's a, an interesting photograph of it that I find sort of, like a lot of skeptics say it's a whale, but it, it doesn't look to be in some ways here, so like, I mean, and, and you'd think that a, a bunch of experienced fishermen on a thing that see whales all the time and stuff like that aren't going to get that excited, right? So, yeah, you know. Uh, people discount that part, but I mean, it's the same thing. Like, I mean, uh, I, I'm certainly not going to mistake a large mouth bass for a muskie. And I, so I don't believe that people that work professional time on the water and stuff like that are, don't know the difference between sort of whale and sort of things like that. So I think this is just a sort of loopy excuse used by skeptics to sort of pass the buck, right? But And again, you have to remember, I mean, there isn't 10 zillion scientists. There's a heck of a lot of them. But I mean, there isn't 10 zillion. And they, out of the 10 zillion, only a handful of them, so many per year, are sponsored to go on an expedition anywhere to do anything to do nothing, right? Sort of idea. And so the odds of one of these guys finding anything of real sort of substance is extremely remote, right? Because there's too much coverage to cover. I mean, if these things were commonly seen all the time, right, people would be, like, if they were just there every day in the sort of arbor, like, I don't know, like, you see sort of like smaller mackerel sharks someplace in some area and there's all kinds of them hanging around it or something like that. Well, that's something you see all the time, right? Like it's more common in the area and sort of then they, they see that, right? But these things, if you notice, a lot of these monster reports are far and few in between, sometimes they're many years, right? So that that's the thing is, is that these things are not common. So the odds of the scientist guy being there at that time is extremely like below as you can humanly find and and these things should be sort of understood like i mean 
the skepticism is sort of silly. You, you don't even know 5% of the ocean, and you have no idea what's out there. And there's all kinds of creatures, like I showed you, that uh, sort of are dinosaurian like sort of stuff my other piece there i got clearly a living dinosaur giant fish monster that was titanic size who landed on newfoundland it wasn't a whale it wasn't a, a seal it wasn't any kind of thing you could humanly try and pass off and it was a living sort of uh, mosasaurian type of sort of one which exact one i i'm not going to sort of because i mean a lot of these things look similar and these scientists could be totally wrong they might think that the creature might have breathed there or did this and that but maybe it could, had gills too you wouldn't know that unless you found a fossil that would indicate that it actually had gills or not or there's a lot of things to that right so a lot of these drawings that they make may not even be 100 percent accurate of what they really look like in real life right so that's another sort of thing but uh absolutely uh, fascinating so these uh, colder waters out there certainly got some uh, monsters uh, floating around uh next unknown species of giant cookie cutter shark uh, uh, some whales have been found with bite marks that resemble a cookie cutter shark but a much larger than known species a narwhal was found dead by a research group likely though uh, a similar bites can be uh, had from giant Greenland sharks that give similar bites and can reach in some accounts longer than great whites and, and things like that. So uh, that's one of the suspects, either that or there actually is, and yeah, it's very feasible. I mean, the, I, the, the odds of them knowing every shark out in the ocean yet is like below zero. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there's massive hundreds upon hundreds of other sorts of species that are sort of unknown uh, of sharks just let alone massive other sorts of species of fish and that but uh here this uh, giant cookie cutter shark there <laughs> he's attacking poor bernie the whale here and that's uh, sort of going along right so uh, these colder waters are uh, pretty sort of uh, uh, devastating for that uh, sort of uh, stuff there so you, you certainly want to be careful when you're <laughs> out whale watching for the uh, giant unknown cookie cutter shark he could be out there but uh, absolutely fascinating so it'd be interesting I, I wouldn't be surprised but at the same token it could be other sorts of stuff there's also sleeper sharks that are known to do similar like things their bite mark isn't exactly the same as that but but I mean it's still like it could be there there could be some confusions with that sort of stuff but uh even one group there they were uh some colleague of the eugenie clarks or something had reported that to uh eugenie clark so uh, very interesting anyways uh, just another fascinating sort of one out there that could be out there sort of uh, thing like that uh now i hear these giant greenland sharks although most science say that greenland sharks do not attack humans this is not fully true uh, natives have told stories of them stalking them in boats and even when they were walking on ice also shockingly they have been recorded far up rivers and even in shallow water uh, accounts of uh, giant ones over 30 feet long have been reported I, I, I shocked there uh, oh, what was it probably about 10 15 20 years ago or so I can't even remember that summer in that sort of range these divers were uh, shocked uh, swimming in the St. Lawrence uh, River uh, they were way way up it's in the sort of more freshwater part of the sort of river and, and things like that and uh, they were swimming along this beach where they do sort of practice diving and stuff like that and uh, here the, a whole gang of Greenland sharks was in less than 10 feet of water just all sitting around in the sort of thing uh, and scared the living heck out of them right and uh, I actually I mentioned this in the book where uh, this might be the explanation of something I saw in the St. Lawrence River that I, I was with this lady and we watched this titanic 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 fish-like thing whatever it was <laughs> right? sort of coming along and I mean uh, I, I cover it fully there in this sort of thing but it very sort of could have been something like this and it could be that sometimes they make it past sort of different sorts of things right going through a canal system or whatever and have gotten up and sort of stuff like that right so but absolutely uh, uh th there was a trapper from nunavut in 1940s was followed with his sled dogs 
uh, down the ice in an open pocket by a giant shark 30 feet long that he thought was a Greenland shark, that's what it looked like. Didn't have the big sort of jaws like sort of thing. But the 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 thing actually, as he was like, so it, there was an open area, right? And so he's walking along sort of the edge of the water and the ice. And he's walking along and he sees this titanic thing uh, coming up like this. And I mean, this thing was monstrous and their do his dogs were sort of looking at it and barking and the thing just kept cruising along with them and sort of stalking them, right? Seeing this sort of like, right? So, uh, and then this thing finally sort of went down and he sort of meandered off, staying away, not as close to the edge. <laughs> so, but, so this is what these divers would have seen like this sort of as they're coming along, right? So, I mean, absolutely uh, t uh, terrifying, right? I would love to hook in one of them. In fact, them even more so almost than a, between them and a great white is the sort of uh, and I the reason why is because I believe I might have hooked one I, I was in Quebec and I was out in this uh, uh, out in this sort of ice fishing area there where it's right on sort of the, the, the bay there uh, and uh, so what happens I didn't know this at the time I, and I had already been collecting these shark reports and all these kinds of stuff like this, but I'd never heard of anything right around that sort of area. And uh, you have to put down, like, it seems like you're dropping this, your line down about a mile down. I mean, it's wild. This, we went out and there was this crazy Quebec sort of ice fishing contest out on this thing. And the kinds of lines that I had wasn't sort of suitable for you. you had to get this sort of heavy and get it way down in this sort of thing. So I, I got up with this uh, character, this giant sort of weird things that they use there. They're like a huge sort of clothes bin reel sort of almost. They look like a giant fly reel. And sort of then you got cable on it and you lower it down and sort of use that, right? And then attach onto it a big sinker and then sort of a winds off of it and then you sort of bring the dude up, right? But some crazy giant thing hit this thing and almost yanked me into the friggin' hole that I was trying to hold on a lot of times. And whatever it was, I was scrapping up with it and stuff like this. And you seen this great big sort of gray sort of shadow like this and then it just snapped and then the thing was cut it was like right through it and so i went running to this dude and the teller said what was this and all this kind of stuff like this and he was inside the ice shack he could have helped me here <laughs> but instead he was inside this ice shack and uh, whatever uh, the, he said that, and he started winking at a few of the others that was uh, sitting inside this thing, and, and he said it might be the killer sharks that are in the river and stuff like that, right? But but the thing is that I found out later that actually sometimes people do actually ice uh, ice fish and catch them there. So this, what, what I believe I must have had on, right? So I actually might have had a Greenland shark on my line before. <laughs> so, I mean, it was absolutely, but but I mean, that this was way in the 70s, right? And I mean, uh, so I haven't been there in, uh, in that sort of area there, but it was uh, right in this huge sort of uh, bay, right on the sort of, uh, and it pours right into the ocean, right? And it absolutely a uh, stunning place. But I caught other weird sorts of fish there, sort of, uh, uh, and things. But I mean, it was a, a interesting, sort of fun time. But every time you'd hook something, you'd sort of, it took you like about 20 minutes to seemingly to pull it back up with this thing, right? It was absolutely crazy. But uh, I, it was so long ago. Yeah, I mean, but whatever it was, I mean, this thing was titanic. I mean, and, and I mean, it scared the heck out of me when I started seeing this grayish sort of thing as it was coming up towards the hole, Right. So that's what I'm I'm pretty sure like because I mean this thing cut through very sort of heavy line that this guy had on these things and everything. I mean, so whatever it was uh, either that or some other species of shark or something weird that, you know. But whatever it was, it had to weigh like probably several hundred pounds sort of things on it, at least that because like I mean, this thing was Titanic it was like because uh, I was out in uh, uh, the Otter River one time and some guy hooked into this Titanic sturgeon and I mean this through the ice I was the, the guy kept trying to sort of force and I said no no like this and his line almost got wrapped around his boots so I was trying to help him feed this thing and cutting holes all along 
the edges of his hole and seeing if we could bust it through so possibly he'd be able to finally land this thing. And I kept telling him, you're pu pulling way too hard, sir, relax, dude, just let him pull, uh, like, sort of thing like that. And he kept tugging and tugging and tugging and finally this big hook that he had sort of, uh, it just sort of straightened out and sort of, it was gone before I could get all these sort of side holes busted into one big hole, right? So, but I mean, from me feeling that thing, even from that, and I've hooked quite a few giant ones uh, on a rod and reel, but by hand, sort of like this sort of way, uh, it, it was like that. Like, I mean, so whatever this thing was, it was Titanic, right? <laughs> so there was my ice fishing lake monster that I sort of ran across, whatever this sort of thing was. But I mean, this uh, uh, the, the, these divers were shocked by this. So it just goes to show, right? Like, like I said, there's a lot of strange things out there where they, science doesn't know these behaviors and then they find these shocking things to them. But because at the, if they had have accepted the accounts all the time that people tell them they see these things from time to time, then they wouldn't be a shock, right? But instead, because they sort of, you know, until one lands right in their lap, it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> sort of thing like that, but absolutely fascinating. So, but anyways, that, that was my sort of a, a experience of sort of a, uh, uh, these sorts of uh, ones. It was absolutely a, a fascinating sort of a, what you how and, and oh that was another thing that was interesting down there they had it was hilarious they had some kind of carnival like sort of thing going on and they had this sort of carnival bonum guy they call him or something he's some kind of looks like a miniature abominable snowman and this bonum guy was wasted out of his mind and he was wobbling around to different people's shacks and all kinds of stuff and and people were getting pictures with him of the carnival bonum and ladies were uh, swatting him in the bum and everything else i mean the funniest stuff i mean with, with these guys they really love their uh, ice fishing and beer there <laughs> so so it was a great time anyways uh, hooked into some kind of prehistoric shark monster or whatever it was <laughs> and saw the carnival bonum and uh, sort of stuff like that so it uh, was certainly was a, a good time but anyways uh, we'll, we'll get on about that but uh, there has been these accounts you know like of a uh, different stuff and even in uh newfoundland and all kinds of stuff of gigantic sharks like the, you know where they sort of like were titanic of size right and sort of and and these greenland sharks have been found in a lot of sort of diverse sort of areas or even suspected uh there was uh, sightings supposedly even around mexico and stuff like that so the range may be much larger than what sort of could be known right but they seemingly typically are more of a cold water sort of a thing but and they seemingly aren't remotely as aggressive as a tiger shark or a great white or even worse, a bull shark, sort of thing like that. But there is these accounts that I'd imagine, like even though science claims they go only swim slow, I, yeah, I don't believe these things to a certain degree because if you're sort of like, okay, you, you're a big sort of creature here and you may need to eat sometimes and you might not be able to find always scavenged food right so you could sort of i'm sure make a burst of speed here and there once in a while if you really sort of need some food right and sort of thing like that so i would i would suggest that probably they can move quicker than what they think they probably can and sort of under the right circumstances they may do these things they there's been reindeers found outside of them full reindeers and uh, and also like tires and license plates and all kinds of crazy stuff have been found inside of shark stomachs because they have this kind of like a false like where where like it goes in and then they can sort of hold it there before they sort of digest it so just in case if it isn't that good they could always sort of regurgitate it out right sort of idea but uh uh so but anyways a, a very interesting and uh certainly uh, uh, there's some uh, pretty terrifying sort of stuff out there so these poor Inuits uh, walking by the sort of ice edge there uh, might not be a, a, a good idea sort of thing like that um, for them to do this or they could uh, land themselves in a bit of trouble <laughs> sort of stuff like that so very interesting and there's 
similar accounts like this in uh, sort of Lake Iliamana, which I cover the book and sort of things like that and some different ones, right? But uh, absolutely a fascinating. Uh, and, uh, and what freaks me out is I might have actually had one on my line, right? And sort of a uh, but but anyways, uh, uh, we'll continue on here. And uh, uh, next, uh, uh, I love this creature, the stellar sea cow, uh, first described by Seller in, uh, Seller in 1741. Uh, then the bizarreness of claiming was extinct by 1768. Could you imagine, like, even way back in those times? I mean, these guys took, like, months sometimes just to travel to one place or the next, and you're only on a little boat ride. Now you get off, you walk around. How much could you walk around? each day to see the jungle and then you're already making statements well I looked in my backyard I didn't see the monster he must not be there he must be dead by now <laughs> I, might, I find this astonishing but these guys have been like this since the earliest times right and and I find that absolutely weird that you're that sort of been belief in yourself that you actually believe just because you went out there for five minutes and looked down in a sort of a bay. You didn't see the stellar sea cow. He must be gone. Like, I mean, that's really sort of bizarre, sort of, <laughs> really, you know. So it makes me wonder, like, I mean, the it could be just, you know what I mean, the pompousness of it, hey? Eh? Like, I mean, I would never think that. Like I said, I mean, it was really hard for me to swallow that. Here I missed out on a, all these ages, I'd heard these stories for decades of this one particular monster-sized turtle that I'd never seen, even though I fished by this spot a trillion times. I certainly was willing to admit it that even uh, the most biggest skeptic on the planet, that the thing, yeah, is definitely out there. And and that's the point is is that he, 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 I learned that it, no matter what, like it's very feasible that just because you didn't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, right? And so that, that's one thing when they pro make these pro proclamations of extinction, they're actually doing the animal creature a disservice because then there's no law against poaching up against something that doesn't even exist. The, there's no anything and you're sort of now the area's sort of left to the wind, right? Whilst with if you said, no, 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 uh, you, you know, if you took even the lesser evidence that you're still finding a footprint or two or different things, then that should be enough to, that it's feasible that the creature's still there, that your great science eye didn't see it, and that you should be protecting it. That's the way they should be doing it, right? So I, I just don't agree with that sort of mentality at all. I mean, I find it absolutely weird that sort of, like, I mean, so many, even in tiny little islands, there was this sort of a dragon-like sort of lizard monster uh, in this one small island, and it was not seen for about 100 years, and they all claimed it was extinct and stuff like that, and some guy just uh, photographed it a few years ago. And I mean, this is the tiniest little island that you could possibly imagine with no five million trees or anything to hide the poor monster, right? So even they can hide in a barren landscape on a small little island that you can walk across in no time and uh, uh, evade scientists for a hundred years, certainly a stellar sea cow in gigantic open oceans and bays, they're the size that you can't see from one end to the other and all this sorts of stuff. Uh, and obviously creatures aren't stupid most of the time enough if they see some big shadowy ship coming along, they probably go away, right, most of the time. And these sorts of things, and this is why, you know, sort of, uh, you know what I mean, the lesser creatures are, aren't that common in the first place. They're not going to be seen, like, even way less, right? So this is the thing is that there should be more open-minded to these sightings when they rarely occur if they're consistent and things like that. It should be taken a bit more serious, right? Like, uh, the creature is said to be up to early uh, 20 feet long range, especially reported in Bering Islands, including a smaller type, like a miniature version of it that's uh, apparently more uh, sort of inland, sort of in some of the areas. Uh, reported still killing them in 1800s for their livers and making uh, shoes out of their sort of uh, leather-like stuff. Uh, Cape Chaplin uh, fishermen found a dead one on a beach in 1912. The crew of the Burren in 62 saw a group of them in a shallow lagoon with sea cabbage that did not freeze in winter. Interestingly, this cabbage was known to be liked by them. 
So what's the odds that these guys in 1962 that are sort of crew members, I mean, you're not talking here uh, sort of uh, Jacques Cousteau's crew members. These are just regular sort of fishing leg sort of guys, right? And what would be the odds that they would then imagine an imaginary sort of creature, right? Then describe how the creature is eating a type of cabbage that only sort of was described ages in the 1700s and what would be the odds of these guys sort of like come on i mean seriously and why would they make like an official report and all that sort of thing so i would say that probably in 1962 in this sort of bay there might have been a few of these stellar sea cow still around at least up to that point right and sort of thing like that so that's definitely a, a, a to me one of the better sort of uh, sightings that I like that particular one because I just I find the feasibility of these guys describing a cabbage species that then is found out later to be liked by this animal the odds of that is just like this Mokili Mbembe thing each time it eats of the liana tree I mean come on seriously like there's no way that some African pygmy guys made up the same imagined tree the same tree with the same monster as what the bible is telling you is and and then the same tree like sort of thing it could even be a liana tree i'm not sure what kind that would have been there but identical thing a very tall tree was sort of these sort of uh, uh, fruits on it with sap like stuff in them sort of thing right in south america and a few other sort of areas where every one of these and one in Australia, the same thing. How is it feasible that each time that sort of then these random sort of ones all make up this long neck creature eating of this particular fruits of these tall trees? I mean, it's absolutely too weird to be sort of not have some kind of basis to it. And the same thing with this. I just, I don't believe that, Yeah, you know what I mean? A, a, a commercial fisherman and all these kinds of stuff are this sort of like uh, ancient knowledge of other sorts of stuff and decide to come up with this big hoax for something to do. I, it just, it's not feasible to me. So anyways, I, I would think in 1962 at least, uh, in that sort of uh, this lagoon, apparently this lagoon maybe has some kind of thermal springs or volcanic like stuff or something like that that keeps it warm where it doesn't sort of freeze, right? So, of course, these creatures, you know what I mean, they would sort of know this and sort of hunt around this sort of thing, right? So, I mean, I, there could be still some there. So, I mean, that would be a, a wonderful sort of thing if this creature still exists. But uh, also stories of Baffin Island area in Hudson Bay of upturned boats ramming into canoes to kayaks. Uh, many descriptions sounds possibly could be a relic populations of sea cows floating around. In uh, 1983, a skeleton was found of one on the Soviet island. Uh, a, a huge manatee-like creature, 12 feet long, was witnessed by a skipper along the coast of Washington in 2006. A fishing group saw a giant 15-foot seal-like creature chewing on seaweed around Baffin Island in a uh, group of 8 to 10 individuals in the mid-90s. Uh, also witnessed in some lakes, an interesting account of a creature seen by a native in a canoe of a giant seal-like creature surfaced near his canoe that was slightly longer than his canoe that, that he was going to spear, but the creature dipped under and he did not see it reappear on a lake called Umanak in Greenland in 1960. Another account of a giant spider like creatures is I already mentioned as well of immense size that eats seals in there, right? So pretty weird. <laughs> right? <laughs> so this poor guy, uh, if he's still in the Sumanac Lake there uh, with these sort of giant spider monsters, it doesn't sound like he might be there much longer. <laughs> right? That sort of thing. Man. So that's not good. But uh, can you imagine, eh? Like, I mean, so they're a fascinating sort of creatures. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's possible there's weird stories like this in Finland and there's some of these other countries that all of this sort of creature could have sort of gotten washed in from like like let's say a big big storms and rains came in like in older centuries 
and one time the sort of some of these lakes or rivers got really flooded so a few of them get floating in and then they get in the sort of lake and then boom oh now it dries up a little bit they either stuck in there or whatever right so it could be that that's why you get these reports in certain areas and I notice these lakes are very close to sort of the ocean and that sort of like, so it's very feasible that these creatures could even sort of drag across the sand and climb into another stream and whatever, right? Like all that kind of stuff and finally get into it, eh? sort of thing like that so absolutely fascinating uh here's stellar sea ape uh, uh, this bizarre seal like creature had fuzzy hair and a face like a monkey to dogs described by uh, stellar in 1792 said to have a mustache like a raldo <laughs> so so if somebody counts here he had a big sort of a raldoian sort of mustache on him and a typical red of color that was at two L's in length, so that I, I think that's roughly like around five, six feet towards that sort of range, right? Uh, gray fur on back, head like a dog, a thinner body that tapered to tail and a tail split. Uh, no known sightings uh, after until 1965 when four people witnessed, uh, uh, one witness was a brigadier. Uh, they said it was five feet long, reddish yellow hair, face like a dog, with a close together spaced eyes in the Aleutian Islands. Another account of a native trapper, 1970s, uh, seeing a seal with a great uh, whitish fuzzy afro, hair bluish gray upper area and more red in belly, and dog-like face with little pointy ears. The creature was three to four feet long in the Northwest Territories on Lake Murdoch. So another sort of a fascinating but bizarre one there. So he looks like a bit of a puzzball there, like an animal, sort of a sea ape. <laughs> so I suspect that this creature is probably real and extremely rare sort of seal of some sort that may be sort of a bit more sort of furry <laughs> sort of thing like that, a bit more pointed, pronounced sort of a snout on him. So absolutely a fascinating uh, sort of creature, but uh, uh, he's the sort of... Uh, Fuzzbolian of sort of the uh, ocean world there, <laughs> right. and and you get these sort of mermaid accounts and stuff like that. So like, what if some of these like, let's say this thing actually exists, right? And a sort of thing like that, and 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 sometimes like every other seals do. They uh, 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 sort of investigate the odd lake around. So this Lake Murdoch's uh, near the sort of ocean and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, it wouldn't be sort of, you know, it'd be feasible, the same sort of thing. So so the creatures sort of, they crawl across some kind of banks or whatever and get in somehow through a river or whatever, right? So then they go in there, these uh, uh, sort of these ones like that, I'd imagine if you had like sort of the long red hair and fuzzy and sort of stuff like that, or in this case, the one had a bit more sort of like silvery, whitish, fuzzy sort of hair, but similar like, right? So the same, the the idea would be is like, I mean, from a far distance like that, right? And the, the guys had uh, uh, a 24 Labatt there, <laughs> right? sort of, uh, that uh, mermaid uh, might start looking a, a bit sort of sensuous. To her. <laughs> so these sea apes might be sort of a responsibility of some of these sort of mermaid sightings. Maybe that's what George saw. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, I, I like the idea of it, a fuzzy haired sort of afro seal that sounds good with a giant Geraldo mustache. Uh, pretty entertaining, uh, sort of thing like that. Uh, hopefully that's not the ladies there. Uh, that they'll need a silk. <laughs> so that must be the male sort of versions of them or whatever. Right? But uh, absolutely uh, fascinating. But uh, another sort of interesting uh, uh, cryptid out there. Uh, I like this uh, one uh, too here. This one's absolutely fascinating. Uh, these uh, tourists, this sort of big glacier had crashed and sort of busted off, right? Off of this main sort of thing like there. And then boom, went down in the second that it did this, it disturbed this giant sort of sea monster, right? So these people are on a big tourist boat here. This isn't a little thing. So this is a big long sort of tourist boat, right? You know, love boatish like sort of stuff, probably smaller, but but that kind of like sort of more where you got a bunch of them on it, right? So now sort of you see here the first one there, you see him, he's sort of these three sort of rippled, like humps, sort of draggedy, like very similar to like the lack mushroom one or these different ones that I show you, right? Now, look at the titanic size of this thing. 
look at the length of that. Like you can see this great big iceberg here, or even sort of in front, right? So, but look at how huge that is across like that. And I mean, these people are way up on this sort of boat railing, right? So they'd be pointing down. That looks like fairly farther piece away, yet you can clearly see this thing is titanic. If you look at it compared to the b uh, background terrain and the stuff like that, this is huge. And it's not a different honors playing together and everything is a perfect symmetry all across the thing now you see the creature come up and you can see there's the darkness in the sort of middle there so it seems to be one giant solid long sort of snake like sort of monster here right so definitely this no no whale on earth looks like that no no and shark uh no no and any sort of thing like that so whatever that thing was this is another sort of evidence of a hundred percent of a unidentified, extremely large living anomaly and a sort of thing. And, and this goes to prove these scientists, but they, they said before, oh, nothing could survive in that frozen sort of stuff and uh, they wouldn't be able to find nutrient food and all these kinds of stuff. Obviously, this isn't the case. I mean, these things are all presumptions. These people haven't been down there. Do you, do you see Jacques Cousteau diving his head up there right now? <laughs> it's hilarious. These things, a lot of this stuff is presumption. There hasn't been the exploration that they sort of would make you want to believe, right? And so so this, the thing is, is there's all kinds of creatures that are oceans and seas and lakes and rivers that uh, probably are out there that sort of uh, uh, certainly uncatalogued yet to science, and this dude is certainly one of them here. That thing is titanic size. I mean, and he's exactly equal across. He's like a great snake sort of like this. And I mean, these... There's no no one sort of thing that would fit in this sort of range like that. It's certainly not a dolphin or a whale. It's not a, a group of seals. It's not any of this sort of thing. Now, here's another one fascinating uh, uh, one that uh, could be... Now, this is interesting. Uh, even though the claim is, see, it's Cataburosaurus, it certainly looks like the Cataburosaurus in a lot of ways. But, but I mean, this is Alaska here. But, but certainly, uh, this is not a seal. And it's uh, not a group of otters. So anybody that, you know, we, I, I, I'm not even going <laughs> to talk about it. Alaskan sea monster film, uh, Nushagak Bay, Alaska. Although blind people claim seals or seals in a row, this is absurd, uh, absurd and uh, not, not a known species, even if some sort of large seal. It certainly isn't any of the sort of known ones. Now, here you can see the creature first coming up. And these people are sort of, I guess, on a beach or on a boat. I'm not sure if they were on a boat or a beach, but anyways, they're sort of, it's right out sort of in front of them. And they're going like this, and one guy says, oh, it must be an otter, so like this. And he said, no, 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 like this. He says, uh, so then now two bumps come up, right? You can perfectly see that that is impossible that it's two otters. This otter's head would have to be up that creature's rectum, sort of a thing like that. It's in perfect symmetry line is exactly the same, okay? Now, here's where it gets fantastic. He comes up and he blows sort of snorts sort of... Uh, steam like stuff which five billion lake monsters and whales and everything else are known to do right so you, you can't yeah you could say yeah a whale does that but that has nothing to do with this sighting because this is not a whale this thing has a, a head sort of like a, a typical sea serpent sort of thing like that you see some of the neck come out it's certainly not a seal it's way too long to sort of like this. I mean, the size of this thing is incredibly long. It's equal snake-like thinner sort of a creature. So whatever it was, it's extremely, extremely sort of uh, um, more on the heavy side of a, a real sort of sea monster, not as sort of uh, the other sorts of things that I could explain through other sort of methodologies. It's certainly not a sturgeon. It's not any of that sorts of things. The creature has a, a smaller sort of a head here, very Loch Nessy monster -y sort of thing like that. A seal you would have seen right away. You see where that sort of head is, and now all of a sudden you don't see anything, right? Okay. 
The reason why is, is because on a seal, this head would have been built right into the big fat body. You would have seen a big wide sort of area there up on the top, but instead you don't see that because his neck is thin like the rest of them here. And like you see in the second one, or even uh, in the second one, you can see how it's sort of long and tapered sort of thing. And so now his neck's down more and then it's sort of in a loop. Now this next loop has come up, right? So that's the thing is it's certainly not as sort of a, a seal or otter or something like that. I mean, this this creature is very large, uh, sort of, and, and certainly was a, a fascinating. So congratulations, that guy got a sort of a, one of the more certainly credible films out there of a sort of a sea monster that would, you can't identify with the typical whales. It's not a crocodile. It's not a sturgeon. Uh, it's not an eel. It's, it's swimming very different than an eel. It doesn't look eelish like, even though it does in a lot of ways. It's certainly the head position. And even if you look at the top, it may possibly have very small ears. There's two little black sort of things there that, like little indentations that possibly could be an ear of some sort. So, absolutely a fascinating uh, sort of creature. Now, this one I'm a bit weird on on the fence, and I'll, I'll explain why and, and things like that. But here's the thing. Uh, this is uh, one that was uh, uh, taken in the Ch uh, Chena River there, Fairbanks, Alaska, a giant, strange, worm-like creature. It was swimming up the river in 2016, filmed by a government worker. Although some claim uh, uh, that, that it's... Uh, um, a rope and stuff like that that's sort of and i've seen this 100 percent more than once probably about i don't know 10 15 times over the years where somebody's rope was stuck in this sort of river from an anchor and stuff and it was swishing they collected some sort of ice on it and was swishing around in the sort of an open pocket i'd seen that like i said i used to wait i was crazy even in october and stuff like that i'd be waiting out the water freezing cold and uh, now i pay for it with aching bones and <laughs> as you get older and <laughs> sort of stuff like that but but the thing is is that here's the problems there's a part in the sort of film there's an iceberg that's on the sort of right hand side and the thing actually bypasses the iceberg and then swims at very strange when i've seen these ropes being pulled the current swishes it back and forth left to right left to right left to right but it never actually is moving forward okay so th that's one thing now here is the other strange thing that i find I can't explain by a rope ordeal because now you'd have to have two ropes. If you notice on the left-hand side here in the bottom, right, look at on the left-hand side of that picture on the left-hand side, you see nothing there. You don't see anything on that one, but now on one of the frames, all of a sudden, then you see this brownish sort of object like could be possibly some kind of weird fin of some sort, or whatever it is, now all of a sudden there's a new object there, right? And you can see this brown sort of like weird sort of thing there that's sort of down underneath and it's sort of standing at a different sort of an angle. <laughs> so the current would have, if it had been a rope, the same thing, it should have sort of been pushing it more equal flat, like it, but it looks instead like as if possibly this thing's lifting up its spin maybe or some kind of weird thing like that right and also the fact that it does go past an iceberg indicating that it is going up forward in the current uh that that and and also the thickness of it very few people have ropes this sort of you can see how like look at how th thick the bottom right one Look at the brown object on the left. Like, let's say that was one of its spins or maybe its head turning around. Like, that could even be his head. Yeah, I never even thought about that. But it could be at that point he turned his head to an angle and sort of was now turning around doing something weird, right? So, and that could explain why it's sort of squarish, roundish, up in the front bent sort of like that it's feasible that that was even his head now he's turning around and if you see on the sides you can see these weird spike like things on it on the side of this sort of brown object on the left hand side so 
what if that's his sort of like little fins or something like that that comes out of it? So whatever the case, it, it seems not feasible that if this was a rope, then there should have been rope in front of this rope that you should see here and you don't see this. So there's nothing that's holding this thing right so this is my problems with saying it's a rope i clearly can understand why some person would state that from just seeing it it could be possible because these things do exist however because of that sort of reason there seems to be more to it and the more i'm looking at it even now i'm wondering now at first i was thinking possibly a fin but now i'm wondering that the creature just actually bent sort of like so his front head is way over here to the sort of the left on the bottom screen, the far right one. That brown object is actually the front of his face, but he just sort of turned his body and that's his wiggly worm sort of body coming along with it. This thing's fully attached. You can see weird spike-like stuff that I can't explain. There shouldn't, the ice shouldn't be sort of like that, like with these perfect spikes. Each one's identical and it's growing out of the side of this brown object, whatever it is, right? And you can see the colors the same in patches where the ice isn't covering the ice monster. And you can see that there's brown solid stuff there. And the width of it is way too wide for most typical ropes, unless it was some kind of big giant ocean ship rope. So then that still doesn't even match up with this sort of thing that's like so and and again you would have to have something attached to it in the front pulling and holding it there right so there's some weird stuff about that so uh, and also that trout and many species of fish are known to sort of just barely go up current by using this sort of current sort of uh uh little pockets that it has and different stuff like that and they'll just move along with it so they don't have to as exert as much energy so maybe the worm monster was now deciding to turn around and he was going to do something else right but whatever it is uh i'm more in the fence that it was actually alive and not a rope uh, because, like I said, there's too many inconsistencies here. There should be rope in the front here, so I should be seeing more rope holding that rope that's a snag somewhere, right? So you don't see that. So nothing's seemingly holding this. You also do not see in the other frames this weird brown sort of object to the left that may be his worm giant monster head. That you, you But you do sort of see it here if you see, look... In the, in the second per, uh, picture on the left, look at how the white now tapers and you can see underwater, it looks like partial, now it's partial underwater. And it looks almost like a sort of plesiosaur like head. It's sort of more weird sort of diamondy shape a little bit and stuff like that, sort of thing like that. So that's weird too, because on this frame here you don't see that it's very square and much thicker but now you see this weird worm like sort of head going this way so that's possibly what he looked like there like when he was under the water and there was still some ice on his head then maybe he shucked some of that stuff off and stuck his head up to sort of go this way so whatever the case i mean there's something very strange there this creature seems to have spikes on it, so I've never seen ropes with spikes that stick out on the side like that. So I can't explain that. The thickness doesn't seem to be correct and sort of things like that. And I can't explain how it went past the iceberg and how it's going up. It certainly does move a little bit. It doesn't massive amount and it's going quite slow, but there is some movement a little bit here and, and you have these other anomalies, right? So... I would say there's certainly something more feasible that there might have been something actually to it that some strange visitor from sort of got up in there, right? But absolutely fascinating. So uh, uh, now next, uh, some cold areas of the Alaskan to Russia, Siberia to the USA and Canada to Ireland of the Devil to Crown Pike, which I mentioned <laughs> in the other show. And last show talked more about it and showed some examples. Uh, if you've ever uh, saw or caught a horn pike, please uh, contact w uh, with the account. I'd absolutely love to hear it. They're so hard to get these stories. But but uh, uh, the, here's one here. This terrified French <laughs> angler started saying, Hail Marys after reeling up this beast. 
his reflection of terror showed upon the waters uh, as he reeled up this uh, horned beast. He was convinced since he had hooked it uh, with a red devil that he was being punished for using a spoon with the devil's picture on it. <laughs> so so he, he, when he got it up to the thing and he seen those sort of these four demon horns that had two pointy horns like the devil, but two uh, curved horns in behind. Uh, and he said, yeah, I had, the, I had the daredevil. I think that I was cursed uh, because I used the picture of the, the, the devil. <laughs> so, so this was this poor uh, Frenchman's uh, terrifying experience. And the creature shook off near the sort of thing. He, he refused to lift it up out of the water and didn't want to go near it and stuff like that. And kept trying to shake his uh, daredevil spoon off with the leader sort of. And he was going to cut it. And the thing luckily. Uh, flobbled off <laughs> so, so you can see his terrified look there reflection in the water there so uh, 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 poor super Jean Guy there was <laughs> a bit terrified of the uh, sort of uh, horn monster uh, these beasts can have one to five or more horns some crown shaped similar devil flying freshwater ray exists that horn has horns of the devil <laughs> so we'll talk about uh, him next the bizarre sort of uh, uh, a sort of account. Uh, uh, here, uh, beware of the uh, devil water glider of whales. Most accounts do not have horns, but a face like a toad bumpy that glides through the air and a long tail on it. One bizarre account of an early kayaker on Longhorse Lake uh, was across the lake and a three-horned devil monster <laughs> leaped out of the lake and uh, glided. Uh, was dark uh, top jagged streaks with some silver to gray silver underbelly, whitish sheen as uh, she paddled in terror to shore and would never go back out on a kayak. <laughs> it was about uh, five feet long and at least eight feet wide with a four feet to five foot long sort of tail on it. So this is what it looked like and it had these strange like uh, sort of a stripes sort of in it where some parts was silver, then you'd see like black and sort of, so that's why it was drawn like that to sort of, it had jaggedy sort of in some areas, most of the areas was dark, but she set up near the sort of a front of its face and stuff like that. It seemed to have like sort of stripey like sort of stuff going on. Could have been just the reflections in the water or whatever, right? So, but could these uh, glider uh, bumps be horns instead? So, like in some of these accounts uh, say, and this thing apparently has been like seen in some inland lakes, but also like around ocean bays and these kinds of sea like bays and things like that from time to time, these strange sort of uh, ray like sort of ones there. Uh, uh, besides that, a giant killer pike, the snake like serpents uh, looking accounts. Uh, have also been uh, reported in this uh, Long Horse Lake. Records show back over 1,400 years of some odd things in the lake, uh, far predating sort of a, a nest and stuff like that. Uh, in, in fact, the earliest coat of arms that they have, they actually have a, a depictions of the sea monster on it sort of these serpent dragon sort of monsters, right? So uh, absolutely fascinating. Uh, uh, one account uh, from 1999, a skier got attacked by a giant pike in there. So the skier actually went out in the sort of water and this giant sort of pike monster tried to attack him. Uh, Piked a very uh, a rare manta ray like uh, monsters, uh, five to 20 feet long, uh, typically here, right? So, I mean, there's some pretty strange uh, accounts from this sort of lake, but here, get a load of this. Uh, a huge pike skull estimated 18 inches long was killed by uh, possibly by a larger pike in this lake. So whatever attacked it actually bit right into this thing and sort of killed him. So can you imagine this dude's head was like 18 inches long and they figured this pike was at least five feet long. Look, look at the skull on this dude, right? So, like, I mean, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so, I would love to fish this, like, this is, like, the ultimate. I mean, to get, like, a six-foot pike or something like Like, but can you imagine that something attacked that? Something attacked that, man. Like, what on earth would, would like, I mean, you, you're attacking a fight. You'd think a five-foot pike would be safe, eh? Sort of thing like that. So, is it that sort of wild? Like, I mean, absolutely. I just love this. What I... 
first saw this, I was just totally friggin' and thrilled by this wild eye. <laughs> I would love to fish this lake almost more because I don't care about these sort of colder cryptids. I'm not too concerned eh, that uh, the, the giant octopus monster and the squid ones give me the creeps. So I'll stay away from those particular spots. But, but uh, <laughs> the giant pike monsters to giant fish ones of this sort, uh, I'm not remotely uh, uh, fearful of this at all and uh, would love to prove that a six, seven, eight foot sort of pike is out there, right? <laughs> so I would use the most titanic sized baits in the planet and have the patience to, even if I'm not catching much, obviously I'm not going to get a lot of hits here, if ever, right? <laughs> sort of thing, but, but I would use baits that are way bigger than sort of what is commercially sort of made right and these sorts of things and uh, that's what I would have because whatever attacked this I mean there is okay uh, it seems way too big to be sort of a bite at, like a cross like that of an otter or some crazy like sort of other weird things so and I mean to attack something that size I mean wow like I mean so what what could possibly be in the lake that would be able to sort of attack one that size I mean, that's absolutely, because <laughs> I mean, he's astonishing, like most people wouldn't believe a five foot pike story anyways, right? So, but here, here you got sort of one dead here, but this guy is again, was attacked by a bigger one, right? So like I told you in the last episodes there of these sort of terrifying sort of a, a, a pike from some of these canals and uh, Majoria and, uh, uh, and all these different ones, right? So, I mean, this would be the sort of place to go. I mean, you don't have to worry about deadly poisonous uh, spiders and uh, man-eating bats and all these other sort of ones. This is, this is way more up my alley. I mean, if I want to chase sort of sea monsters and sort of stuff like that, this is definitely much more sort of... So I would say that this place out of any of the sort of lakes out there, I mean, I can actually see in front of my head here at least that I know by catching titanic muskies right the numerous massive ones over the ages here that you know what I mean that this moose is big right so I know this right so his story is believable and sort of thing like that and so then makes me wonder what on earth sort of and and I've because I've had this happen where I've been bringing in huge fish and they attacked it but to attack a five foot pike I mean wow wow <laughs> right, so like I mean if that doesn't get your trophy angler uh, sort of juices flowing then you're not an angler <laughs> because I mean I would fish around the clock 24 hours a day no sleep behind this thing day and night and for years I would be possessed by it right if if I ever saw it once or lost the mother or something like that, I, that would be it. I would be possessed. <laughs> I would be after this thing day and night around the clock until I finally got this dude, man, right? because I just, it would have to be like that, right? So, I mean, so I love this. I mean, uh, this lake and some of those other ones, but especially this one, I mean, because the other stories, I mean, I, I, yeah, there's some monster ones I've seen like around this sort of approaching this range that we got here, but, but there's, but this is where something attacked this and killed them at. I mean, they found this sort of carcass up on this sort of shore, right? So, you know, either that or some sea monster or, or maybe this giant manta ray nailed them. <laughs> right, right. The devil horn manta ray monster. But whatever it was, I mean, I want to hook it. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, that's like the most craziest thing in the planet. I mean, absolutely uh, terrifying. So, but anyways, uh, absolutely fascinating sort of a, another uh, cryptid out there. <laughs> Uh, here, giant prehistoric salmon reported mostly in the Kenai River. Also, similar monsters, Japan, Russia, China, a few other locations worldwide. In the Kenai River, Alaska, an angler in 1970 fought a titanic salmon with a huge kipe and giant saber tooth like teeth over five hours. Estimated at nine to ten feet long, that hit a red eyed spoon. 
and the hooks pulled out. It seems these classic baits from demon red eyes to red devils need to be reinforced and uh, blessed uh, before use. <laughs> so so they, they, they have the ability to sort of get the giant monster to bite, but then they quite often lose them at the sort of boat <laughs> sort of stuff like that. And, and uh, similar reports of di a giant uh, sort of titan you show salmon Russia and stuff like that of these sort of monster like 10, 11 feet, the nine feet sort of things like that right similar like beasts of lake trout even up to 14 feet long have been seen in the northwest territories and similar stories in japan of a giant unknown trout and china along with uh, alaska a few other areas of north america uh, sort of thing so absolutely uh, could you imagine eh? so uh, the old red eye spoon <laughs> So can you imagine this sort of giant monster? This this thing leaped out of the air, and they said that it was sort of like it was way above this sort of boat, right? Like, and actually, that's it was like fighting a Titanic tarpon. Like uh, he was guessing this thing probably weighed like three four hundred pounds, sort of on it, right? So like whatever, uh, I mean, absolutely astonishing. So and there is uh, fossil records of a giant one that was around there, and there's native accounts of sort of super titanic sized salmon around the region and, and and in other sort of ones like I said in some other areas. So it's quite feasible that some kind of giant, you know, a huge show tame and like sort of a fish is out there of some sort, right, that is similar to that, you know, so absolutely a uh, fascinating uh, sort of uh, one, but uh, very cool uh, sort of a uh, uh, cryptid and uh, sort of just another sort of uh, uh, one out there. There's so many, there's a bunch of other ones that could have uh, sort of included and things like that, but I just wanted to give you a basic idea of the sort of fascinating ones that are out there and that there's certainly a lot of uh, mysterious sort of beasts that we uh, sort of haven't cataloged yet and sort of thing like that. But uh, I'll tell you that uh, lake there, uh, uh, five foot plus bike, that's the place to go. <laughs> I, I still can't get over that, that something attacked that man. I mean, absolutely, that is sort of, wow. <laughs> so if it, if it wasn't the giant manta ray monster or some other sort of wacky thing or one of these rare serpents, if it really was a bigger pike, I want to hook this dude more than anything on the planet. I would, like I said, I would stay there 24 hours a day, man, like around the clock if I could hunt this thing. I wouldn't ever want to leave. <laughs> I just, I, I, uh, what, uh, th this one guy, there was a, another sort of account that I had forgotten to mention about. <laughs> this guy had uh, seen, uh, he, he was in some bay and this Titanic pike was in there and his dog started barking at it. And uh, they both leaped out in the water and tried to get it, and the monster sort of went down and sort of went away. But, I mean, the, the stories out of this lake is just absolutely wild, right? So, like, absolutely fascinating. So, I mean, definitely that's uh, uh, the place to go there. So, <laughs> so I'm liking it anyway. So, uh, if you have any giant sort of fish tails like that or sort of uh, other sort of bizarre cryptids from uh, Alaska to New Zealand, Hawaii, it doesn't matter. Uh, wherever it is, I'm uh, always interested in these sorts of uh, things. So anyways, this was a bit of a shorter presentation for this one, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you enjoyed that. Now, I know some of you don't like some of the comedy we have with the Lol Nest Monster and some of these other ones and things like that, but I mean, this is uh, th this guy's a comedian and sort of like that. We, you got to have a little bit of fun with sort of cryptozoology sometimes. Uh, so, uh, some of the stuff, the stories are sort of so insane and funny and things like that that they <laughs> make them interesting right so i like the crazy ones along with this sort of thing and i certainly like the idea of these uh uh, uh, devil uh, bike la la <laughs> so, so I, I want to catch one more than anything of the sort of a, a planet I'd be terrified of it but uh, and then I, I'm going to get uh, sort of a, uh, some kind of a, you know a gang of sort of a reverence and priests and everybody else to give them a, a blessing and uh, sort of <laughs> sort of stuff like that so, but, but whatever the, those things are and all these other sort of strange accounts it, it just goes to show that there's a lot of amazing mysterious things out there and uh, if we don't start protecting our waters again and things like that we're not going to have these mysteries much longer right so but uh, 
Anyways, uh, stay tuned uh, for next show, and I uh, hope you have a, a great day, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.